Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a quick look at the Javis Cam C1. This is a unique mini home security camera slash spy camera that has a built-in battery so it doesn't need to be plugged into power 24-7, but more importantly this model has built-in cellular connectivity via 4G LTE. There's a SIM card slot offering another alternative, say if Wi-Fi isn't available, if you're putting the camera inside of your car, as long as there's cellular reception available, or you can take it with you to a hotel or a lodge for example, so it's really compact Packed. Of course, it can still remain on while being plugged into power, has a 2800 milliamp hour capacity battery, which is claimed to last upwards of 7 to 60 days when fully charged. The range depends on how often you're taking a look at the live feed. It does have infrared lights on this model as well, so it can see in the dark. Otherwise, it claims to have a wide-angle lens like most home security cams, although because this is a more compact model, there is no pan and tilt functionality. Technical resolution is 12 megapixels, and there's also a built-in micro SD card slot supporting up to 128 gigabytes if you want to record content offline. Now, by the way, it includes a SIM card with 300 megabytes of free data. That being said, it is a unlocked cellular modem, so you are able to pop in your own SIM card of choice if you prefer, but their plan will then cost around $15 a month. And on the inside, you'll find a quick user guide along with the bundled nano SIM card that you can pop into the camera. Interestingly, the provided service is called EOT Club, similar to a pay-as-you-go plan, but interestingly, they have partnered with both AT&T, T-Mobile, as well as Verizon. It will automatically switch to the best performing cell towers in your available region, supporting 4G LTE. Otherwise, aside from the SIM card, we'll have access to the C1 camera, and we'll take a closer look at the design in a moment. In the separate compartment, you'll find just a quick charging cable. It's using micro USB. Would have preferred USB Type C in 2023, but it is what it is. There's also a little mount, which includes a 3M sticky on the bottom, so you can mount this more easily onto a dashboard of a car, for example, onto a shelf, or even on the ceiling if you want to put it more permanently into one position. It has a flexible hinge here that you can also rotate the camera afterwards, and there's also an option of mounting it using screws more permanently onto a wall. So taking a closer look at the camera itself, it is going to be a little bit larger than some of the spy cams that we've seen in the past, which have disguised themselves in the form of a charger, for instance. That is just to accommodate the modem for cellular as well as the built-in batteries. Aside from the lens, there's just the motion detector as well as some of the infrared beams, built-in microphone. Body is constructed out of a soft touch rubber material that makes it quite grippy and easy to hold. Then the back here, we have two slots for the SIM as well as micro SD card slot, a reset as well as a power key as well as a micro USB charging port. Here's what it looks like when attached onto the stand for reference. It still is relatively compact. This is a standard US penny next to it, and also something like a standard AAA battery, smaller than even most action cameras like GoPros, for example. The Ubox app works with both iOS and Android, and you can tap to add a device. You're gonna tap on set up 4G device, when you first turn on the camera, by the way, it takes about 20 seconds to initialize. Afterwards, you should see a blue light that will be continuously lit. A pretty fast process, only taking about 5 seconds, as long as you're in a region that has decent antenna reception. So for example, if you're in a basement, which is really far below ground, it might be a little bit tough, or you're in a super rural location, and you can then rename the camera if desired. I'm just going to tap on Next and complete the setup. And afterwards, the interface is quite familiar to other home security cams that we've seen in the past. You can connect multiple cameras as well, and from here you can check if the camera is currently online or not. Although what's different is you can also top up the cellular data plan. Again, you don't necessarily have to use their service since it's technically unlocked, but here's an example. Their plan currently charges around $15 a month. Six months with fewer alerts, it's around $80 versus one year, about $140. The more premium plan, up to $230, covers up to 60 gigabytes of data usage. So it's not the cheapest plan in the world, possibly because it is a fairly strong service that is automatically connecting to both AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon networks. So reception quality tends to be quite decent, I would say, even indoors, like we talked about, mostly getting two to three bars, even though we're further away from a window at the moment. Otherwise, we can tap on the view here to jump into a live feed, but as you can tell, it is indeed a very wide angle view. Like most security cams though, do expect a few seconds of latency, around three to four seconds in my testing, but still serviceable, and the overall brightness as well as level of detail both seem to be satisfactory. Again, it's a 2K resolution, 12 megapixel sensor, 
but certainly functional enough for making out most details as well as objects and colors, faces without too many problems. Now, under service, you can also take a look at event triggers. This will save what's being captured within the past seven days or the past 30 days onto the cloud service for you to then view back later on. Or of course, you can also save it onto the SD card if you don't want to use that cloud service. And now dimming all the lights, here's an example of the camera is seeing. So surprisingly, it is able to actually see here in the dark quite well. Even if there's very low light, you can tell that the color still seems pretty well saturated, despite the fact that it wasn't actually in the night vision mode per se. This is actually what it looks like when you have the IR bulbs flicked on. Everything turns into black and white for faces, detecting objects in motion, still working here in the dark. Uh, using again these bulbs which are only visible here to the camera's lens, as you can tell, six of them positioned next to that main camera sensor. And even if there's very low light around you, in the regular color mode, surprisingly, it does a fairly well job of illuminating objects, cranking up the exposure automatically, even though it was nearly pitch dark in front of us, but it still produced a decent looking color image, even without flicking on this mode. So not bad as far as the sensor quality is concerned. With that being said, there are a couple of quirks here, one of them being that there is no built-in Wi-Fi module on this model, which is a little bit of a shame. I think it could have been even more versatile if it had both conventional Wi-Fi in addition to the 4G LTE modem, so it could switch back and forth depending on if you're in the house or if you're in a more rural location that could conserve on some of the data usage. But as it is, this model, do keep in mind, is cellular only. Again, I would like to see a hybrid model added in the future. Also, this is not really a extreme weatherproof outdoor type security cam, so even if you're mounting it onto the wall, it's mainly supposed to be used in a car or in a house or porch rather than on the siding outside of a house, for example, because it's not going to be waterproof. What's pleasant though is the motion detection sensor is quite sensitive. It can get up to a range of also 50 meters or so and works even if it's looking beyond a window or a pane of glass. So the Range and distance there certainly is competitive with other models that we've seen recently, even if it doesn't have quite as much of AI functionality like recognizing specific people's faces and then telling you specifically who has entered or is walking past the space. Some of those more advanced machine learning AI tricks are only going to be available with some of the bigger names and brands on the market. For this, it's just going to be more of a one-size-fit-all. As long as there's motion, regardless of who is triggering it, you'll end up with an alert on your device, which you can review under your album. Both videos and photos can be captured up to standard resolution or HD resolution that you can pick between. And interestingly, under advanced settings, they also give you a network diagnosis uh, that will go through whether all the services that is powering the application are functioning correctly. So they're using looks like Amazon servers as well as some alternative servers in case it goes down. Last but not least, under device management, you are able to share the live feed with other folks using email. More than one person can take a look at the feed at once if, for example, you have other family members or friends that you're trying to share the camera's view with. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on look at the Javis Cam C1. I think it's a pretty cool idea in terms of, again, making it super compact, has better than expected image quality and night vision capabilities for something so small, and it does have decent size rechargeable battery, so it doesn't have to be plugged in 24-7, making it a little bit more versatile, where conventional internet might not be available, and even power for that matter, this might be a pretty interesting choice to consider. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the Javis Cam C1.